we're not meditating today. <laughs> What's the look of shock for? You you can't tell me that. I'll do it on my own time. <laughs> <laughs> you can meditate if you'd like while we do the show. Um, but yeah, the meditation. <laughs> if you'd like for the audience to think you just fell asleep during your own show, <laughs> please go ahead. Well, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a good way to operate a show. This is Untethered. I'm Wesley Green. I'm Scott B. Smith. I'm a little disappointed at all this, unfortunately. I hate to start out the show with that, but but I am. I thought it was going to be a cool thing. I mean, I think they're not doing it because, um, you know, you may have, maybe you haven't heard there's been a, a bit of a virus going around the past couple of years, and um, it has uh, <laughs> it has affected um, tourism. Everyone's, everyone's spirituality. <laughs> that's right well they they were doing it it was a it was a public meditation trip by the way we're at Wat Lang Ka if you ever come to Phnom Penh if you're watching this in the future it's probably still a good place to come to um to do a public meditation I'm sure they're going to get back to it you know once tourism comes back but there's really no tourists here right now so it's not there's just there's nothing going on they don't do it but there's a little uh, debate online of whether or not it's a guided meditation or they just give you a mat or it's just, you know, a fun place to go. You can meditate in a coffee shop if you want. And I usually do. I call it my coffee shop meditation. Also, I drink coffee while I'm doing it. So it's more like just visiting a coffee shop. <laughs> just as the Buddha intended. Just that's right. Exactly. We're going to still poke our head in where, where they uh, are doing this, but I'm sure it'll be back at some point. If you're here in the future, you should come by if you, if you're interested in that. Um, or even if you're not, just, that's just a sort of um, thing to do on vacation. <laughs> even if you're not interested, come by and be bored. <laughs> also, well, I mean, if, if you're watching, if you're watching this in the future, congratulations. There's a future. <laughs> <laughs> We're not completely sure that's uh, going to be true at this point. All right, let's, I know. You go that's, that's why I wanted yeah. to congratulate people. I'm not entirely <laughs> sure. I mean, you know, <laughs> I know. Good, good luck for making it there, <laughs> friends. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm going to flip the camera around. Are you ready? I'm. I'm ready. <laughs> That's the wrong person. Boy, if I had a nickel for every time I heard that. <laughs> okay. I have three nickels. <laughs> Take my shoes off. I'm going to try not to laugh because uh, I don't know if laughing is allowed. Yeah. Well, Wesley's going to be respectful and quiet, but I don't have to be because I am half a world away. That's right. Um, I mean, I'll be respectful, but not quiet. Also, you tune into this show to hear people talk, so that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> All right, look at it. I mean, there's no one here. Yeah, not but Buddhist. still. I mean, I don't know. There's... Um, I don't know. Holy Spirit? I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah. There's a lot of Buddhas. That's an that's a squad of Buddhas. Look at that. Yeah. That's a lot of enlightenment right there in that room. <laughs> Goodness. Now we were talking the other day about this. Are those Nagas around? The um, that Buddha there. It looks like maybe they are. Yep. Yes. All right. It is. And it's a it's a naga that's sheltering the the Buddha. Okay. I mean, I think that's right. We're providing you an umbrella. Oh, there's. Look at that. Mm -hmm. 
Anaga, for those of you who may not know, and it's not really obvious unless you're looking for it, I guess, from those statues, um, is a a spirit um, mm -hmm. or a, a deity, depending on, I don't know where you want to place them, I guess, in the hierarchy, um, uh, that are uh, serpentine. They're snake-like. Yep. Well, this is where they do it. In case anybody ever wants to show up and meditate, and they just pull those mats out for the public and do a public meditation about three or four, three or four times a week. Um, so you just got to check online for uh, what's going on. And um, I don't know. Of course, I don't know when they're going to get back to that. As I said. Yeah. That's not what we wanted. Okay. Things, things are always in flux with this whole pandemic thing. Yeah, of course, of course. And, and I mean, um, I'm saying they're not doing it, but of course, if people don't show up, I'm sure they don't <laughs> do it ever. Without, <clears throat> if people start showing up and asking about it, they may very well just pull a mat out for you and, um, and grab one. And uh, and and if it's unguided, it's just you sitting there anyway. So it's. It, but the thing online, strangely, they call it the Pasana meditation. If it's unguided, how is it any kind of meditation? It, maybe it's intended for people that are already practitioners. They're they're public, not you know, monks, but they're already practitioners. Maybe. Again, not really much. But there's a lovely uh, building here. So is that the watt itself? Yes. Yes. Explain to us what a watt is, in case we don't know. It's a temple. It's actually, the term is used for any religious um, uh, structure, except I think they said a mosque. But anything else, even a church, would be called a watt, so it's not really specific to Buddhism. But here in Cambodia... Um, the country is 97% Buddhist, so pretty much every Watt is going to be um, a Buddhist temple. And the, cat. the term, yep, there's a cat. There's a term, uh, the, the term, sorry. Oh, these roaches, I just feel like I'm not supposed to step on them now. No wonder there's so many of them. Um, anyway. Uh, the term is actually used in Thailand. So okay. If we end up there, so what, they'll be calling them the same thing. What are what language is it from? Uh, great question. Um, you, you know, Thai, <laughs> Thailand actually comes from, like in ancient times, came from the Khmer Empire. So I assume their language is connected. Where does it come from? Where does the term come from? That's, that's a great question for a linguist Lee, if you know leave leave the answer in the co comments below this video yeah but only if you really know don't make up crap and just put it down there <laughs> exactly we do not want to spread misinformation about linguistics or about other people's religion i mean you know uh, really? Yeah, that's true. It may not it may not be your religion, but you know, have some respect. For God's sake, have some respect. It's a nice tree. Well, that's about it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> This is it. This is this one is not famous because it's uh, extensive and uh, has a lot to explore. It's the meditation sessions, and it's a very historic wad too. Did did you get the thing I sent you on Wat Lanka? I want to say it was built in the 14th century. I don't know if I got that. No. Well, all right then. I I will say that if I did. Yeah, I did. Either way, I haven't read read it. So, um, oh, okay. <laughs> what are those? What are the little shrines? Uh, kind of on either side of the front gate here. 
little um oh oh these things you know they dog maybe this is white dog this well yeah white dog this could be um my uh western interpretation from the above ground cemeteries in spanish and um french tradition but uh these remind me of um uh, what do you call the things you bury people in above the ground? Um, a mausoleum or a crypt? Yeah, crypt. Like there's above ground crypts that are in. And if and, you look, uh, look at the wall, yeah. if you could, Wesley, back where you, the way you came. Yeah. There was, I think there was a, a Naga statue up there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Actually, Actually that's if you look closely on this, there are Nagas on the corner there. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you see kind of this one, these are a little more um, embellished. You see what we were kind of talking about around the Buddha statue there, that kind of, that shape. You could kind of see the 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 hood or um, whatever that might be behind it. Uh, and then the, the heads of the serpents, you can kind of see the outlines on those other ones, but it's really clear here. With these. Right, yeah. And they are all over the place. Um, now, what what uh, culture, what tradition does the Naga come from? I believe it's Hindu. Yeah, pretty cool, right? This is um, uh, an Indian influenced culture. I was reading that somewhere online, going all the way back to its beginnings. Uh, it makes sense, but we're actually a, a decent distance from India. But uh, India is a very uh, ancient culture itself, so it has had a lot of influence on the world. Of course, the major influences, I would say, have been uh, religion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say Hinduism, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, as Hinduism. we kind of talked, talked about in an earlier stream you know the the buddha was hindu originally so you know right yeah the only game in town at the time and there are actually a ton of other religions in um in india that started in india but we'll have to go to india to episode to do all that to find out about all that yeah these are definitely um burial places Hmm. Two, I don't know if you, they're coming through on the screen, but there's two photographs on here that are built into it. I kind of see them, yeah. Hmm. Okay, okay. It's hard to get a sense of scale, I guess, with them because I'm looking at these things going, is that big enough for a person? I mean, how do they put them in there? Are they they cremated, right. but I can't tell because there's no sense of scale, really. Oh, well, I don't know what I can do to improve that because it's all just them right here. But sure. these are huge. Yeah. That that one is enormous. How tall do you think that is, roughly? Seventeen meters, and I don't know. Okay, so about what fifteen feet? Is that right? Um, well, those two things would not no. be equivalent, but, um, no, that's but, not, yeah, you're right. I don't, mm. 15 feet is probably a better 15 to 20 feet. Okay. So maybe five meters. Yeah. So I, I messed up on my numbers. Com conversion. Yeah. Yeah. Can, can you tell that we don't have the metric system here in America? <laughs> and I don't know how to use it. <laughs> yeah. A meter is pretty close to a yard. I mean, I'm sure it doesn't take you terribly far, but we're, yeah. we're just estimating anyway. Oh, that one's very bright compared to the others. The stone's very bright. Look at that. That one's very red. Yeah. Unusual. That one's painted silver. The bright one. Oh, is it? Okay. It looks white from... Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, silver. 
and that one's red. So I think the stone on that is red, or it's uh, no, no, it's paint. Sorry, I'm stupid. Hmm. It's paint. Wow, these are very intricate. Yeah, there's a lot more here than I could see from the street too. Yeah. Well, again, this probably goes with it being such an old watch. Just like older cemeteries tend to be full. Yeah, I mean, these have got to be important people. I mean, considering, you know, I mean, they're, I don't know. They just seem like it would be important people in something this a, elaborate and be this kind of exclusive given the amount of space that you've got, you know. Yeah, I'm going to guess it's monks. Hmm. Or or other people that are important to the what? I'm I'm guessing it's not open to the general public. Well, there's an interior to some of them. Look at that. So it is like a mausoleum. It could also just be a shrine. Maybe the actual body is not interred there. Interred there. It could just be a shrine to that person. Mm-hmm. Is that one that you could go inside? Uh, there were two photographs of, uh, like, framed framed photographs of, of people in there. I wonder if there's, like, the remains are in there or if it's, like, ashes. I don't know. Um, I don't know how common cremation is in um, Hinduism or Buddhism no, I either. Um, I don't either, but I'm guessing it's ashes, if anything. Hmm. It it wasn't shaped like uh, it was housing an actual body. Okay. Yeah, it did look like. Well, if there's somebody in there, they got to be standing up or something. It's a little, you know. It's like a Scooby Doo episode where you open the closet door <laughs> and the. Uh... Oh no! That's probably not popular in Buddhism, but that's totally what I want. <laughs> well, <laughs> these, I don't... these are my burial wishes. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> Lady, places. Ladies and gentlemen, here they are. Reference this. <laughs> I want you to stand me up so that I can scare someone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also. Just keep using me to put me in wacky situations where <laughs> <laughs> I will fall out and spring out of things. It's it's like weekend at Bernie's. That's what I that's what Wesley's saying he wants. <laughs> Just a weekend at Bernie's type situation with his his remains. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, I just actually my my thing has always been I've always said uh, I really don't care what people do with me when I'm dead. Just make sure I'm dead. Before you do it, bury me, cremate me. But you know, if I'm not dead, then uh, that's that that would be bad. Yeah, it would. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know how in the old uh, this is getting grim, I guess. But you know how in the olden days, like, um, people would have like a bell. Run oh. uh, uh, next to their graves, and their string run down into their coffin. So in case they got buried alive, they could ring the bell, you know, and people could come get them. I remember that, yeah, because people um, they didn't have a good way to determine whether or not people were dead. Um, yeah, that's true back then, but now the way to determine is they take all your guts and stuff out whenever you're they're preparing your body for, you know. Yeah, that. Don't do that so. unless you're sure I'm dead. That's, that's yeah. exactly. I'm just saying yeah. we don't have to worry about being buried alive so much anymore. All your guts and stuff are out. So <laughs> nobody survived it yet. You're not. You're not. Unless they put robot parts in, you're not. You're not alive at that point anymore. Um, I would like for them to take all my blood and guts out and help people with it, like. Um, anything they can use, just you know, put it in somebody else. It's fine with me. Again, I'm gonna go with throw it at people in a comical way. <laughs> well, 
drop it on I mean, their head like it's a, a grim version of Nickelodeon. Ew. Oh, gross. Oh, no. Uh-oh, looks like you lost the double dare challenge. <laughs> Here comes a, a cauldron full of Wesley goop. <laughs> well, I can't fill up a cauldron while I'm alive, so we've got to put it off to... I'm I'm trying to eat enough so that I can. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> just, I'm just going to job of the hood it, you know, just... <laughs> Good strategy. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it'll be that much. It'll be that much sooner that I can be, you know, used for spare parts or whatever. <laughs> with that kind of attitude, yeah. it'll also yeah, be a yeah. lot less parts. It'll still be good for anybody. My, like, what is this? His his liver is so fatty. We could, you know, cook it, fry it up. Right another, now. another good use. No, no, we're not advocating cannibalism in this stream. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, I, next I'm stream maybe. I'm not. Oh. On what you're doing? I'm not advocating it. I'm just trying not to condemn people for their beliefs. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and, and say unless you're like your plane has crashed in the Andes and it's the only thing you got, then I won't judge. But like otherwise, I'm gonna judge. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get fairly judgy about that. I'm gonna. I kind of draw the line at cannibalism. Now I've made some exceptions, obviously, but <laughs> you've made exceptions about cannibalism. When did this happen? Not for myself. I mean, just a few minutes oh. ago when I said, you know, I'd be a little more lenient if it's like, you know, you're starting Crashing in the Andes. Andes. Yeah. Oh, I see. I see. Sorry. Yeah. I'm yeah. I've made exceptions for people, but you know, generally speaking, <laughs> I'm going to say cannibalism bad. <laughs> All I'm right. Go ahead, and judge. I know. I know it's a controversial. <laughs> controversial position to take especially on this public pop uh, podcast but um <laughs> gonna be anti-cannibalism yeah you gotta stand All for right. something i like this building i don't know what architectural style that is but it's cool looking yeah i agree Here's some more, another Naga for you. Can you see it yet? Yeah, it's more Naga for your dollar, ladies and gents. Look at that one. Wow, those look, those look a lot more menacing than some of the others we've seen. You know, I guess it's some a very square jaw. Yeah. I guess Naga has many sides. I do. So what? What is it? A, a spirit for? Um. I'm fuzzy on that. Um, oh, okay. I think I'm fuzzy on it. I'm sorry. And I don't want to just like guess because it is obviously something that's part of people's religions. And I don't want to just throw crap out there about it that I don't you know. know but absolutely, know it's, a, it's a spirit. Um, they're serpentine. I think they are at odds with um, another group of spirits that, um, oh. or, and I say spirits with like a capital s like these are you know powers in the world um for him oh, okay. um, that um they're at odds with some bird like some avian um spirits please forgive me i don't remember exactly what kind of birds but they're at odds and it mm -hmm. makes sense because you know in the in the natural world, hawks eat snakes sometimes and that kind of stuff. So. Hi. Oh, a dog. What dog? <laughs> what dog? So, yeah, I don't know much about them. Um, All right. I think it's the kind of. I think they're generally, um, good, but they can be. Um, I think they can be good or bad, I guess, depending on, on who they are. Just like people. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, um, I feel like that is more reflective of uh, the real world rather than have one character be all good and one be all bad. It makes more sense. 
to draw them along different lines. I think. Yeah, I mean, again, that's me just kind of sort of remembering. So if I'm wrong about that, if they are all supposed to be helpful and and good and stuff, I apologize. But um, hmm. yeah, there's not a lot of absolutism in. I think most um, world religion, when you look at them, I mean, yeah. look at um, look at the Greek deities. They definitely had some foibles. Yes, they did. That's true. Good example. I was going to say that's a that's a very wide generalization, but I think it would. I, I think I agree with it. I think it would be. Um, I think it's unusual to have the all good, all evil split. We just happen to be from a culture that is on that. Well, even Judaism is my understanding from the course I took in college. So, you know, forgive me. I'm, I'm also not Jewish, but um, Judaism thinks all all things come from God. So that's good and bad. So, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and forgive me if that has changed or or. <laughs> um, well, no, no, not. No, no, like, I mean, if that's changed I, over time or certain groups of Jewish people don't necessarily hold to that or whatever, you know, I apologize for generalizing, but that's what, that's why I learned it. Well, um, yeah, I just, I thought you meant, forgive me if it's changed since I heard it, like Judaism has <laughs> had an update. <laughs> oh, yeah. Since <Right. laughs> you heard it. Yeah, <laughs> I did. I, my friend, my friend, uh, I won't call his name. You may not want to be associated with this since we're we may be saying terrible things about religion here. But uh, I have a Jewish friend who's yeah. He told me mm-hmm. there was an update coming, and he shut down for a little <laughs> while. And you know, <laughs> okay, and he had updated. He had updated his spirituality. Oh, <laughs> oh no, thank you, no, thank you. Uh, yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Oh. How long have you been here? Uh, about a week. Wow. No, but uh, I think about in uh, uh, Lanka, Bakuda, but so on, uh, close. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 close. yeah. Okay. Not a lot open. How about today, uh, some, today, Sunday, what do you plan to do? Uh, no plans. This is it. Just Why come to no, see this. <laughs> Uh, no, thank you. Looking for about, uh, looking for about, uh, the monkey temple, golden temple. The monkey temple? Yep. Monkey temple, golden temple. Looking for the monkey temple, golden temple, about near the Mekong Island. Near the Mekong Island. I saw you. Near the Mekong Island. Near. Near the Mekong Island. Yeah, so, I don't really want that. Monkey, monkey temple. Oh yeah, phone. My, my phone, uh, my... oh yeah, go check your phone. He, he got to go get his phone. Well, Scott, do you want to go to the Monkey Island? It's Silk Island. I don't know where he's getting monkey from. Well, the Monkey Temple. I don't know. I mean, today we doing that today. I don't know if I'd follow yeah. this guy around. I don't know if this is gonna good, good call. <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> um... <laughs> No, I and unfortunately that's a, about it. I think for today, because uh, as he just pointed out, this temple is closed. Nothing going on there. But I'm glad we got yeah. to explore it and see it, and we showed the place where people, you know, in the future they can they can go meditate there if they're if they'd like to. It's a it's, I think it's good to do things that have more to do with local culture when you travel. I'm getting foggy glasses than um uh, than just a just a standard you know list of the tourist stuff so i think it's a good thing but anyway we didn't get to do it so yeah, well. we got to we got to look at a cool uh lot though yeah it was nice and there, there's some bigger more impressive ones around town um so we'll see see more of them later but this is uh this is probably the oldest no i'm not gonna say probably i would say it is the oldest if i'm wrong somebody can comment but i'm almost certain this one dates back hundreds of years it's the oldest one in town uh yeah cool yeah right. i liked it oh good i'm glad you enjoyed, enjoyed it good seeing it
Yeah, cool. Okay, well, so our next uh, episode is um, uh, uh, the Animal Sanctuary. Yes. The Animal it's Sanctuary. Exciting. That's in a few days, yeah. Yeah. You, you excited about that? Yeah. And tomorrow, tomorrow here, it will be your birthday. Uh, that's correct. It's just, my birthday is the 21st. But since I'm not getting to the 21st for 36 hours, since this is where I'm at, I'm going to count it as then. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Fair enough. But it'll be the, um, yeah, the 21st, my birthday. I will be hopefully exactly middle aged, be 45. Uh, <laughs> Expecting to get to 90, huh? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. I counted middle age several years back. <laughs> it's just like I mean, there's no way I'm making it that far. <laughs> we'll we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Well, the, I mean, the point is to live a good life. Long is a a nice extra bonus. Um, you know, I mean, my uh, my great uncle, like all of my my. Uh, great uncles and grand my grandfather uh served in world war ii and he he got back and he was changing his tire on the back side of the road and got hit by a bread truck so i always say you know and he died he died so i always no. say you know you never know i mean you get hit by a bread truck tomorrow so wow survive, survive world war ii and then come home and get hit by a bread truck so wow um, yeah Axis could Axis couldn't get him, but Sunbeam could. <laughs> well, there you go. That's a sad situation. I mean, all I right. Know him. Okay. He died in the forties. Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> well if ever you get in the time machine and go back and meet him, you'll be terribly sad about what you know is about to happen. Whenever I see that bread truck start barreling down on me. Well, that right. could become him. <laughs> I, might, I don't know. I don't know how time works. I don't know how time travel works. It was kind of that was that kind of how it worked in the uh, X Men movie. Yeah, that was a good X Men movie. I liked it. It was. I enjoyed that. I like that one. Yeah, I have a lot of uh, I have a lot of strong opinions about X Men things, but I like that movie. <laughs> Okay, well, good. I'm glad it's one that pleased you. All right, Scott. Uh, we're going to wrap it up then. We're going to come back for the um, animals. And uh, we're just fingers across that we're going to get a signal when we're out there. If you tune in on whatever day it is, Tuesday here. No, sorry, Wednesday here, Tuesday there. Um, if someone tunes in and there's no show, it's because we're beyond the range of technology but I, I checked the maps i put out maps for 4g so we should be able to to do the show from there honestly oh i didn't thank you for wishing me a happy birthday thank you for for that um um if i oh. didn't thank you properly um so yeah i did say it right i said it a few minutes ago right you did i just didn't thank okay, you. Good. i don't think I'm oh that's all right i wasn't expecting a thing story about bread trucks so. <laughs> well it's a great bread truck story that's what we've learned today, ladies and gentlemen. We've learned <laughs> that Wesley wants to be he wants his remains to be used for wacky situations and that bread trucks can kill you. <laughs>